Hey everyone, thanks for joining us for another Fox 43 Capital Beat segment on YouTube. Today's guest is the Democratic Chairman or the Democratic uh, House Policy uh, Chairman. Uh, he is from Erie County. Ryan Bizarro is our guest uh, today. Uh, uh, Chairman Bizarro, thank you so much for joining us on the Fox 43 Capital Beat. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing well. Thank you for having me today. I'm excited to uh, have a conversation today. Yeah, I want to have uh, some some fun. I also want to get into uh, some policy. I mean, listen, no one better to talk uh, policy with, at least on the Democratic side, than you. Um, mm -hmm. But we are taping this a day after Halloween, uh, so I want to play a little word association game with you. I want All you. Right. I'm gonna. I'm going to list off a bunch of names, and I want you to tell me the Halloween candy which you most associate with that person. All right. We'll start with Governor Wolf. Whoppers. That's interesting. Okay, <laughs> explain. <laughs> you know, they're just like a traditional kind of candy. You know, you get your mix of the chocolate in there, but uh, you know, nothing against my, the, the, he's older, a lot of older folks. My grandparents like those, so <laughs> I, I just associate like Governor Wolf. I think he would like those, you know. All right, we'll go on the younger side then. Josh Shapiro. Snickers. Or Reese Cups. Okay. Uh, House Majority Leader or Minority Leader Joanna McClinton. You know, Joe's tried to tries to be a little health conscious, so I'm gonna I'm gonna say uh, she's gonna go with the the Reese Cup too. I think out of all the candy out of there, there there's uh, you got to get that that protein, get the peanut butter in there. So definitely Reese's. And now some really Reese's interesting. Kind of caucus. I mean, uh, everybody likes Reese cups. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Uh, well, <laughs> now let's get into the. I want to get the interesting responses. Speaker of the House Brian Cutler. Candy corn. Oh. <laughs> oh. It's yeah, savage. Candy corn. Yeah, he, he likes candy corn. <laughs> My buddy Brian. And, and uh, it, I mean. It, I, joking aside, what, what's the relationship like between the two of you? Uh, Brian and I get along great. Look, I can appreciate any type of young person getting in into this area and this in this field. And Brian has started off at a very young age and his career has just accelerated um, in the House. And it's not easy. Um, it's certainly uh, not like the Senate where everyone gets a participation trophy, right? Everyone, you go over there, you get a chairmanship. That's not how it is in the House. You actually have to fight your way up. Uh, and beat the seniority model. And um, Brian has done that. Uh, I have done that. Leader McClinton has done that. Several of us have done that. Uh, there's just a lot more many people uh, and it's, it's a lot more savage in the house. You know, it's a difference between fighting on the playground and fighting in the country club, right? We, we're, the, we're the playground uh, fighters. We're a little bit more uh, uh, rough and tough. And I, and I give Brian um, all the credit in the world for accelerating the way he did, especially as a, as a young person. Yeah, and I know things, you know, right now it seems like you know, the political divide is, is, is maybe that, that fight, I guess you could say, is it seems to be, you know, feistier than ever. At least that, that's what it seems like. I mean, I, I'm, just, I'm just covering the Capitol. Right. I'm not there on the floor, but at least the, the, the current political climate, and, and maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, it seems like the current political climate kind of, kind of lends itself to what you were saying about that playground fight. Sure. I mean, listen, we were a microcosm of what's going on in D.C., right? Uh, before, I used to say Washington makes us, the, the state legislature, look good. I don't know about now. I, I think that um, we can be as equally toxic as them. I mean, right now, you have folks introducing bills that, um, that hold no merit. Um, they're wildly unpopular to most Pennsylvanians, but they're doing it to appease small um small groups within a, a, a radical fringe. And that's not good public policy. Um, nobody wins in that. Uh, we're perpetuating a whole bunch of lies out there. And consequently, we're confusing people as to what is true and what is not. And I think as any elected official, you, you, you have to be above that. Um, you have to be able to have hard conversations with people you represent and tell them that no, that's wrong. That's an aggregate. If it costs your seat, it costs your seat. Um, if you're in this for a paycheck or to amplify yourself, you're in it for the wrong reasons. Some of the legislation that's currently being discussed, I, I, I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago. We kind of kind of went into this when I did a story on um, Rep. Rab's bill, um, and and that caused a lot of um, caused a lot of controversy uh, on on both sides. Uh, you know, 
a lot of Republicans saying this is a farce of a bill and a lot of Democrats saying, well, Republicans introduce a lot of farcical bills uh, too that don't get a chance to, uh, that have no chance at ever re- becoming law because the governor, they know the governor would veto it. So how do you guys get past that, uh, that, that part where a lot of people have said, listen, these are just showmanship. Uh, this is, this mm-hmm. is political theater. Uh, and get past that to get meaningful results for the people of Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Look, the theatrics, as no doubt about it, have have really have really ruined any type of progress that that, that we can make. We have um, each respective side is more concerned about winning than they are about achieving some actual goal. Now, granted, uh, you know, we I have never served or had the opportunity to serve in the, in the majority since I got here in 2013. I have always served with both the House and the Senate uh, Democratic caucuses always being um, in the minority. So uh, we could talk about what we want to do all we want, and we could kind of push our agenda forward. But at the end of the day, it's about numbers. and We have never had the numbers on our side. Um, I I think there's some great policies out there that the House D's have and some great bills that, that we have introduced that quite frankly, not only do they have merit, but they deserve consideration on the floor. And if we were more concerned about helping everyday people and truly helping Pennsylvanians, um, we would run some of these bills uh, and we would invest some of these dollars um, the appropriate way. Yeah, you I, I don't like to say that we're you know, spend money down because it's more than just spending. When you have a pot of money that the federal government has sent you and, and they have specifically sent that to you to invest for long-term investments that God forbid, if this happens again, it'll soften the blow. Um, you should be using that money accordingly, not to plug budget uh, holes or put it in a rainy day fund. You've got to make meaningful investments in your people. And, and I know you're referring to the, you're referring to the $7 billion in American rescue plan funds that, yes. uh, yeah, that, 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 that were seven. kind of, thrown uh you know pennsylvania's way right before uh, the budget and and the uh republicans decided in which the governor signed listen the governor wolf had a chance to say no we're i want those that money elsewhere but he said no i'm going mm-hmm. to allow putting that into the rainy day fund mm-hmm. whatever deal was struck it was struck uh, quite frankly the governor uh, has to lead on us for a few things but when it comes to budgets and, and, and things like that he you know he's at the mercy of the majority party so he has to have stronger negotiations with them and I, and I get that that is the nature of the beast um, that is when you know he, clearly we're, we're not even we have uh, a large deficit of, of members that we, we can't even kind of level the playing field for being in the minority uh, we, we're going to have 91 members after Tuesday after we win these two special elections. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, the magic number is, is 102, and, and, and we're far from that in our caucus. Um, do you do you feel like you can make that up next year, or is that because the chips are already stacked, kind of against Democrats in a midterm where the president is, a, you know. Uh, a member of the Democratic Party, and, and those midterms kind of tend to go the other uh, direction. How difficult is that going to be to make up? Yeah, yeah these national um, uh, races and these in these national issues have an effect on everything down ballot. But I think it is important for Democrats to talk about what we are actually doing and what we have done and not let folks paint us with a broad brush. I mean, we've got some great things going on here in Pennsylvania. And whatever the national case might be, um, we've got to be able to uh, stand on our own two feet and defend what we're doing and what we're trying to push. And quite frankly, when we did the Pennsylvania Rescue Plan tour, uh, when I took the policy committee and all the House leaders got in a, a, a van and went across the Commonwealth to talk about um, our priorities and how we think this money should be spent, from the most red area to the most blue area, these uh, these things that we want that we want to push out there were overwhelmingly popular. Um, whether it was in Kerry Benninghoff's district or it was in uh, Pam Snyder's district in, in, in Greene County or if it was in Philadelphia. Everybody wants to talk about uh, these things and child care is important to, to rural voters, to suburban voters, to urban voters. Uh, and so we're um, robust uh, uh, investments in our infrastructure and broadband. No matter where you live uh, in Pennsylvania, those are our key issues and those are important to, to voters. So how do you get across to them? I mean, because whatever happened back over the summer, it, it didn't work. And, and now we're in a position where a lot of that money went into uh, a rainy day fund or put aside or whatnot. Um, what do, does the Democratic Party need to do to get across to the Republican Party or 
maybe a better question is how do you meet in the middle? Because at the end of the day, I mean, everyone just talks about, listen, you need the votes and you need something that the governor is going to sign. Uh, so how do you kind of take what you want and take a little bit of what the Republicans want and, and where can you find that middle ground? They know that what we're pushing for is very popular in, in their districts. It, it's, it, it's coming together, right? Like if we're not going to spend all $7 billion, I am willing to go to the table and say, okay, how can we invest three and a half million dollars and make some of this, some of this stuff work everywhere. Um, but again, you know, I, I continue to say it, and sometimes I say it in caucus when some of my newer members want to say, well, why don't we do this and we should be doing this? Um, you know, I have to remind them about the numbers, right? 102 is the magic number. Mm -hmm. we, we all need to, if, if we're here, we should be able to count. Um, and then some of them, yeah, I, Democrats play for policy, Republicans play to win. And whether I agree with their strategy or not, the fact of the matter is they've been effective at it. Um, and, and I think we need to do a lot more on our end. And if that means um, using some of their tactics, then uh, I, that, that's not beneath me. What are, uh, what are some of their tactics in your mind? Uh, you know, listen, they have been very successful over the years of um, kind of running with talking points and just sticking to their message and not deviating and keeping everyone in line. Um, our party, we try to thoroughly explain things. Um, and sometimes I think we get caught up in doing that because we, um, we stand for so many things or we want to um, give a thorough explanation to people of how things will specifically impact you and impact communities. And quite frankly, they don't. They stick to um, a few phrases and they run with it and it works. Um, it works. I feel like we're seeing this kind of on the national level right now with uh, with the Democratic Party, where you have this faction, uh, it, it, or not faction, but the party is essentially fractured into uh, progressives and moderates. Um, and it is the, the message is seems to be kind of getting away from the Democratic Party. And, and do, you, do you feel that same way with, you know, progressives versus more moderate Democratic uh, members in Harrisburg? I think a big part of the, the education piece for the public is some folks need to know what the hell they're talking about. Like they need to know the actual definition of, of, of a socialist and socialism and the difference between democratic socialist and socialism, first and foremost. Um, you know, and, and and folks really need to understand like that there are things that everybody likes that quite frankly are socialist policies. If you're looking at Medicaid, Medicare, if you value your, your, your paid fire and police, those are socialist programs, right? The government owns those programs and you are receiving those sort of services. Um, but, you know, I, I said this in a tweet a few weeks ago and it picked up some steam. Uh, the Democrats rarely ever have the majority. And whether it isn't at the state level or, and of course, at the federal level, but when they do, what do they do? They negotiate against themselves. Regardless, if you try to spend an extra five, whether it's whether it's five dollars or three trillion dollars, the Republican Party is going to to paint you as a tax and spend liberal and you know X Y Z about you. Um, don't negotiate against yourself because whether you you want to spend an extra five or three trillion. They're going to run ads in your district against you. They're going to run ads in your state against you. Do it right. Uh, do it the right way the first time and just get it done and over with. We have historic investments in people. Um, and, and that's what's being pushed at the federal level. And that money comes down to the states. It's the difference between being complacent and competitive. And that's what I try to, to tell my folks. Um, we've got to make America more competitive. Uh, and we've got to, of course, make Pennsylvania more competitive. How has... Erie. I mean, obviously, this, we are based in Harrisburg. So I mean, uh, we are a central Pennsylvania station, but I'm curious talking to you as someone who is from a, uh, a very purple region of the state, how does that kind of shape you know, the way you view policy and the way things should be run in Harrisburg? Well, I'm all about compromising consensus. I think at the end of the day, if both sides leave the table with their hands up, feeling like they've got essentially screwed, then that's good public policy for folks, right? <laughs> uh, the people want. Um, nobody should get everything they want. I don't think you get that in real life, and that's not realistic to get in, in government. And if I could, if my Republican colleagues could just uh, worry about delivering for people instead of delivering for, um, you know, certain folks, we could get a lot done for the state in, in a very meaningful way.
is that how you have felt from the get-go you have been in the house you're one of the one of the democratic party's longest uh running house members at this point you've been there for eight years uh almost nine years now um ha- have you kind of felt that way uh from the start coming from erie i have not deviated my position on on anything really major since I've got here. I've always been the guy who campaigns from the center because I believe that most people are center-minded folks. They do believe in compromise and consensus and a lot of folks just want us to work together. Um, unfortunately, we only hear the loud mouths from you know, the far left or the far right. Those are the, the that's the noise that we hear. Um, and it's trying to decipher um, that noise to, to find a common ground. I, I've always worked to find a common ground. So I, I was told to ask you about this. I, I did give you a little bit of a heads up and I want to go back to uh, 2013 and you know, it's, it's January, 2013. You just got elected to the house of uh, representatives in the Pennsylvania house. Uh, and from the Erie delegation, you have a man by the name of Flo Fabrizio. Now I, I want you to paint the picture of, I mean, people can watch this right now and Google Flo Fabrizio and get a picture for themselves, but I want you to paint the picture of your memory of, uh, of, of Flo and, and kind of what you are seeing. And obviously you knew him before, uh, yeah. before you started, but when you see Flo on the house floor for the first time, paint that picture for us. It's funny we mentioned Flo uh, because today uh, is his birthday. Uh, God bless his soul. I mean, Flo is, is no longer with us. He passed mm-hmm. away in 2018. But, uh, you know, my first day in Harrisburg, uh, I met Representative Harkins and, and Representative Rizzo. We're, we're walking up together to the floor, and I'm about to go in, and then Flo steps back and puts his hand on my shoulders. He goes, I want you to look around. He goes, just remember, these were the winners. And then as I saw two members uh, who are still problematic members to the state, they're ones that are, you know, the conspiracy theorists and just know against everything, just walked in front of us. And I, I never forgot that. I mean, some of the, the cast of characters that, that we serve with are just, it's, it's amazing. And I never, uh, you know, of course I laughed back then, but then I really uh, got to see exactly what he was what he was talking about. Now. And I never forgot that. that uh, these are the winners. These are some of the best these communities have to offer up. And I'm, it's unfortunate. It's really unfortunate. You have some real dedicated folks who I know live in these communities, and, and whether they're Republican or Democrat, um, who would probably do a, a better job than a lot of folks there now. They and want to see things get done. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like that's the, the, the biggest thing when you talk to like the outside world about about Harrisburg. And, and when I, I said that, you know, working at the Capitol, you know, a lot of people just kind of roll their eyes because, you know, they see the, 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 the split government aspect of it. And, and listen, you know, Pennsylvania is a split government. Pennsylvania has been a split government a lot of times uh, over the last 30 years. And that's part of what makes the Commonwealth so great to a certain extent is that there is this diverse kind of, you know, mix of of opinions and values and viewpoints and stuff like that but i mean to the outside world listen all you see is a lot of the uh the the rabble rousing and and people just not kind of getting along that i would imagine that as someone like you said that kind of works to try to compromise it's got to be frustrating as hell sure i mean i can respect uh, the diversity of this state um you know especially the geographical differences and then the political differences of course um but at the end of the day, we can all have our own opinions and realize that we've got to get something done, right? We have to deliver uh, for people where we should not just be in session, either um, naming bridges or doing crazy things like that. That is a waste of time. That is a waste of money. And quite frankly, Pennsylvanians deserve more. Um, I think we have to be mindful about when we're there, what we're doing, uh, and how we're helping people. And I just think that for years now, um, we have not been... Um, that conscientious of people's um, time and taxpayer dollars. So I want to get you out of here on this then. You know, when you look ahead, you look at whether it be the next few weeks, few months, when's the next time you're back in Harrisburg at this point? When's the next session? Uh, next week. Okay, so you're back in Harrisburg. Let's. We are starting a, a clean slate right now, figuratively speaking. Um, where is it that, in your opinion, as a policy Chairman, where is it that Democrats and Republicans 
can find common ground to get legitimate good stuff done between now and say the end of this session. I mean, we're talking meaningful legislation that can be universally agreed upon. How we are investing in broadband. I believe broadband is a, is a top priority and can be a game changer for us. Uh, we're having students who were, uh, especially a lot of them in rural areas, were, 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 forced, were forced to have remote learning and none of them could really get online. A lot of them, I should say none of them, a lot of them could not get mm -hmm. online because they didn't have proper access to the internet. That type of infrastructure is crucial for us. It is crucial for us, not just for these individual communities, but in order to, to have that type of infrastructure in place to, to make us competitive and to attract people here. Then what's holding it back? The, politics is holding it back, of course. Um, politics and the amount of money that should be spent there and whose bill is going to get pushed to what. I mean, it, it's all, it, it's just, it's a mess. People get messy with this. I often partner with Republican because I, I'm not ignorant to think that, uh, you know, my, my bills are going to get pushed uh, just because I'm a member of leadership. In fact, it actually has the opposite. Effect. Right. Um, I always partner with the Republican on, on my bills in order to have that piece of legislation have a better chance. I really don't care at the end of the day because God knows they have stole many, many of my bills and ran it and hmm. have taken credit for it. But as long as the issue gets done, um, I don't care. If it's something that I'm introducing and it's important, and I know it's important to my community, it's important to the people of Pennsylvania, I don't give a damn who gets credit for it. I just want it passed. And I want it passed in the most expeditious way possible. To the point that you just made, we, we did a story back in May just talking about kind of the, the, the politics of, of uh, kind of everything that you just talked about. And you know, we looked at just the 2019-2020 session and um, just we're talking strictly Democratic bills. Three were signed by the governor, three just strictly Democratic bills. I think I counted... 17, 18, or 19 strictly Democratic bills uh, from the House uh, went to the governor, three in the Senate. Um, and then all the, any other Democratic bill was, uh, were ones that were, you know, teamed up with uh, a Republican sponsor. So for people that are watching this and wondering kind of how it works, it's because the, you know, the, the chair people within the individual committees are the ones that control bringing up the bill. And then after that, it's the majority leaders that uh, in the parties that bring up the bill in the House and the Senate. And that's sure. just the way politics work in Harrisburg. So, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, we're talking about uh, I had a, um, a, a a tremendous public servant in my um, region who who passed away about a year ago and I did want to do something for the family and it was like it was pulling teeth to even get a a, a highway namer done because it was a, a democratic thing and I had to work one-on-one -on -one with Terry um, to do it and, and in fact and then the senate was um, giving me a hard time about it so I actually had to amend a bridge namer or, or a highway namer into a separate uh, bill in the senate just just to get it done um, but it's things like that, like they just don't want to give anyone credit for anything because they're from the opposing team. At, at the end of the day, they forget that our letters by our respective names might be different for the parties that we belong to. But at the end of the day, we're all on the same team, and that's to serve the people of Pennsylvania. On that note, we will let you go. Uh, say Representative Ryan Bizarro from Erie County, the uh, Democratic Policy uh, Chairman. Thank you so much uh, for joining us on the Fox 43 Capital Beat. We will stay in touch and uh, do this again sometime soon. Hey, thank you for having me. I appreciate it.